Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back or welcome to my podcast, Rewired to Inspire. I am your host, Jesse Brown, and I am thrilled to be jumping on the microphone with you all for episode number 194. If you're watching video, you can see that I am not in my regular space. I am currently at my partner's house, and there is a snowstorm going on outside. So if you can hear little ounces of water and like the wind blowing, that is what's going on. And so if you can hear my dog clicking around, that is also what's going on. But it looks like she's making herself a nice little bed right now, which is fantastic. So I am really excited to be jumping on today because I am in real time in this moment experiencing what it is that I want to be talking to you guys about. And I don't think that it gets more authentic than that. I have decided to really just be transparent and vulnerable with each and every one of you tuning in. I really value that you guys trust me to guide you on various mental health topics and just navigating certain things in life and just openly talking about experiences that I have had. So hopefully I can help guide you if you are going through a similar experience or you can just feel like you're not alone. I feel like so much of it is just we feel alone in our experiences and like nobody else could understand. Nobody else has ever gone through what I'm going through. And so I just really felt pulled to jump on here and share how I'm feeling because I'm not going to lie, I'm struggling. And so today I want to talk about if it's time for you to take a leap of faith or what to really do when it's time to take a leap of faith. What I mean by a leap of faith is making a decision where you don't know what lies on the other side. There is unknown at stake. There is uncertainty. There is a chance of failure. There is a chance of, you know, maybe making a mistake. There is a choice, a chance of really just a lot of uncertainty happens when it's time to take a leap of faith. But the thing is, is it's really easy to stay safe, to play it small, to stay in our comfort zone, to doubt ourselves, and to stay stagnant because we avoid taking leaps of faith like the plague. Because what that means, and if you can ever think of a time where maybe you've done this, because of that uncertainty, it makes us feel scared. It can cause us to panic and try to rationalize why we should just stay where we are even if we're not happy. So this could be in a relationship. This could be with a job. This could be with, you know, a place that you're living. If you're going to if you're going to move somewhere, really any decision in life. It's a lot easier to stay where you already are because it's for sure. It's certain. You are aware of what it feels like, the motions of it, the emotions with it. And if you're to take a leap of faith into that unknown, that can really cause us to be overwhelmed. And so that is exactly what I'm going through right now. And I've been finding the contrast between the last time in my life that I took a large leap of faith and now and trying to just reassure myself. And that is why I felt pulled to jump on here today. The last time I took a leap of faith was in 2021. I've told this story many times when I decided to move from Alberta to New Brunswick. I had quit my job. I got out of a long-term relationship and I decided I wanted to move back home. I had no job lined up. I had thankfully had a place to stay, gratefully, but I had no idea what I was going to do when I got here. But I also knew that where I was, was not serving my life. I knew that I wasn't happy. I knew that it had, I had taken my course there literally, but I had, my time there had ran out. And I knew intuitively it was time to move on, to take on something new. And my intuition and my heart was yelling at me that it was time. But my conscious mind kept telling me all the reasons why I should stay. And the more time that passed, that whisper and those little subtle messages got louder and louder and louder until it got to the point where I was such a ball of anxiety that I made the rash decision to quit and leave all those things very quickly. And that's what a lot of us do. It's because it's easier to just like wait until we have to do something. It often ends up 
happening very abruptly and not how we planned versus if we were to do those things from a rational calm state they could turn out a lot differently and so i'm not here to say that taking a leap of faith is ever going to be easy because it's not but there's also so much beauty in that there is so much beauty in the unknown we paint this picture that the future is scary that the unknown is scary because we've never experienced it it's going to go terribly wrong what if it goes better than you could have ever imagined? And that's what I keep playing in my head today. So fast forward to today, why I'm talking about this. I stepped away from one of my side positions today. So I was a social media manager for a podcasting company. I'm going to leave names out just because I've talked about this company before and they're fantastic and I have nothing to say about them negative whatsoever. It was just on a line for me at this point in time in my life. And I think it's so hard because I care so much about this company and because they've helped me so much and in a lot of ways have led me to where I am today. And I, so I had such guilt and remorse and nervousness around what that was going to look like, even though for the last couple of months, my intuition was like, Jesse, it's time to step away. You will never be able to grow your business and focus on the things you want to focus on if you continue to invest so much time over here. And so I found myself complaining for weeks to my partner about this, just like, oh, like I'll leave eventually, or oh, like it's not that bad this week, or finding things that were positive about it. And in a lot of ways, there were many, many positives, so many great things, but it didn't counter all the reasons in which I knew it was time to step away. And here's what I want to tell you. Just because something was aligned at some point in time in your life doesn't mean it has to be forever. Think about friends you had in middle school. It is very rare that we are still friends with those people. And if in the chance that you are, amazing. But as we grow and evolve, everything around us as a byproduct is going to change and evolve as well. That's the beautiful thing about life. We are supposed to evolve and grow and things are supposed to ebb and flow and come and go and change and shift. And that's how we adapt as humans. But when we have so much reluctancy to take a leap of faith, it doesn't allow us to see the contrast of what could exist for us. And so what I want you to ask yourself is, is there any areas of your life where you're feeling pulled to make a change? And this doesn't have to be a leap of faith. This could literally just be any kind of change in your life. I'm specifically talking about a leap of faith, but it could be anything. Is there any area in your life that you're like, I want to shift that. I want to move away from that. I want to bring more of that in. I want to have less of that. Whatever it is, start by bringing that to your conscious mind. Because I'm sure there's a part of you that suppresses it. It comes in waves, something triggers you, something pokes it and it comes up and then you suppress it because you, you don't want to face it, right? We're very good at that. If you're feeling pulled to make a change, here's what I'll tell you. You're feeling pulled for a reason. There is something bigger, better out there for you, more aligned for you. And again, that doesn't mean that whatever that thing is in your life now wasn't supposed to be there. There's relationships in my past, friendships and intimate relationships that I know now are not aligned for my life, not at all. But at the time they taught me something. Each person we meet, each experience we have, teaches us something different, which is such a beautiful thing when you can have that awareness for yourself of, it's not that something's like ending or is wrong with you or is bad, but it's done its time. You've probably grown more than you've realized. And if something in you is recognizing that it's time for something different, time for something bigger, time for something just to shift, I promise you there's a reason for that. And you might not know the reason, Right away, you might not know it for weeks, months, hey, maybe even years. I say this quote all the time because it gets me through the day. You cannot connect the dots looking forward only backwards. That is a Steve Jobs quote, and it is something that I live by. Because in those moments, in those present moments, when I'm sitting here and I'm freaking out because I'm so scared of how this decision is going to impact me, I'm like, but if there's such a hard, huge part of me that's screaming at me to walk away. I have to trust that it's for the right reasons. That's why it's called a leap of faith. You have to have faith and trust in yourself 
that it will all work out, that it's going to work out. So ask yourself if there's a part of you that feels pulled to make a change and then ask, why do you think that is? Why do you think there's a part of you that's ready for that? Do you think that you've outgrown it? Do you think that it's no longer aligned? Do you think there's something bigger and better for you? Getting clear on why you believe that that is gives you more necessity to lean on that leap of faith. Then I'd be curious to know, why are you avoiding it? I know for me, I avoid things specifically when it has to do with other people because I'm so scared to hurt somebody. I'm so scared that I'm going to upset somebody, make somebody mad, ruin something that I avoid it. When it's something just to do with me, it's a lot easier. But when it has to do with other people's emotions and business and how that's going to affect their life, I'm typically a lot more reluctant to make those decisions. And I think a lot of us are wired like that because we care. And if you listen to this show, I guarantee you there's a part of you that is very empathic and cares about how your actions impact other people. The last question I kind of want you to contemplate is what will you regret more? It's a really kind of messed up thing to think about, but if you can think ahead to being on your deathbed, will you regret more staying somewhere you weren't happy or you felt wasn't aligned or taking a leap to believe in yourself? And if the answer is that you would regret more staying, then you have your answer. And again, here's what you need to know. It's not gonna get easier. Time does not make it easier. If anything, time makes it worse. Because in that time, you can also be healing and processing and validating all those experiences that you went through. I know now that I finally made this decision, I now get to start the grieving process. Grieving does not just have to do with losing someone. Grieving is grieving a part of your life that no longer exists. And that's okay. It's important to also validate that taking a leap of faith is going to cause a stir up of emotions. Because if it didn't, then it wouldn't be a leap of faith. It would just be something that you did. In which case is a lot easier to do. But when it's something that scares you, a decision that scares you, and you're choosing yourself, I want you to know that that also takes a hell of a lot of courage. And I am so proud of you. I want to pass on that courage that you can do it. And I promise you things will turn out so much better than what your mind is telling you. Your mind is telling you and is wired in that way, which we talk about all the time, to keep you small. It doesn't like unpredictability. It wants to keep you safe. And if it thinks that by keeping you small and keeping you stagnant is what's gonna keep you safe, It's going to keep reiterating all those thoughts for you and continue to seek for, what's the word I'm thinking of? Reassurance of why it's right. It isn't until we make that decision externally that we can start to change those thoughts and we can start to challenge them. So what do you really do about this? I decided to set a date. I recorded my voice note of resigning of what I wanted to say and I kind of thought through it and I set a date. I will transparently say it took me two extra days, but I set a date of when I was going to take the leap. Because when we don't set a date, you're just like, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Because we avoid it. We don't want to do it. Setting a date is very helpful. It also just holds us accountable to follow through. And when we set a date and we say we're going to do something and we follow through, it feels really good. I'm very proud of myself for finally making that decision. In the moment of sending that message, I held my breath, I cried, I panicked, I dissociated a little bit, and this was only like two hours ago. And now I'm just like, what's done is done. How do we grow from here? This is kind of exciting. You did it. That's not weighing on me anymore. It's not keeping me up at night anymore. When we have those decisions that are affecting us subconsciously, they can really start to affect our quality of sleep, our quality of life. I wasn't as present with my partner because I was just so freaking stressed about time and investing in something I didn't want to do. 
If your mental capacity is being taken in the wrong direction because you're investing in the wrong areas, maybe you haven't even realized that you need to take the leap of faith. If you're doing something that is not aligning, not making you feel good, not lighting you up or speaking to you in any way other than money, get the hell out. I promise you something better exists, but it will not show itself. Opportunities do not present themselves until we create capacity to do so. It's like if you have a full cup, you can't fit any more water or liquid in it. But if you take some out, you can fill it with more. Our capacity is no different energetically. We have to get rid of in order to attract. And so I hope you take a moment to just do some reflections for yourself, especially at the beginning of the new year. This is such a great time to physically get rid of things no longer serving us, which I want to do an episode about getting rid of things across the board that are no longer serving us. But the importance of taking a leap of faith and that you can do it. And I know that you're doubting yourself and I know you're doubting your capabilities. But I promise you there's been a time in your life where you've taken a leap of faith before and you might not have even realized it. So reflect for yourself how you've maybe already done this and give yourself evidence that you can do it again. I'm so proud of you and I want to thank you very much for listening to me and sharing my experience. I always want to share from my heart of what I'm going through and I hope that this encouraged even one of you that you're so worthy to take a leap of faith in your life to make it the most aligned, beautiful life possible. So thank you guys so, so much. I hope you're having the most incredible January so far. I have been enjoying thoroughly just hearing your guys' feedback. You guys have been sending some messages on Instagram, which has been very, very nice. So anytime you wanna reach out, I am always here with open arms. And I just created a whole lot more capacity to connect with you guys, which is very, very exciting. So focusing on the pros is also a really helpful way to get you through leaning in gratitude, leaning on those that love you and support you and just finding all the reasons of why you should do it, all the evidence of why you should do it, not all the reasons why you shouldn't, okay? So thank you guys so much. I'm so proud of you and I look forward to chatting with y'all next week. Bye, you guys.